and thank you for joining me on another episode of Two Guys and a Lot of Wine. I'm Bobby P, and I'm joined by two regular guests we've had on the show many times, and they're becoming pleasant regulars, which I enjoy their company on the show. We have Mr. Chuck Joseph, wine and cheese expert. His family owns the ShopRites in Canton and here in ShopRite. And of course, Vivian Grady, West End wine connoisseur, just a knower of everything. So thank you both <laughs> for joining me. Thank and, you. Uh, and this episode is called Sipping and Slipping into Spring Wine. And spring is just around the corner. You guys are going to be watching this episode in March. All the years we've been doing the show, um, I don't know if we ever had a, just a, a show devoted to spring wine. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think uh, this might be our first just devoted to possible spring-themed wines. We have five wines we'll be tasting tonight. Uh, both Vivian and Chuck were very nice to bring in their selections. I have three selections, and which are going to be interesting, but we'll get to that after we start our, our first pour. Right. So, Chuck, what can you tell me about this wonderful and interesting-looking <laughs> bottle from the wise old dog here in West yeah. Harford? So, you know, first of all, we all like to select a great-looking label, you know, when we choose a wine, and I think this um, wine passes that test of a very cool label. Um, this wine is um, from the winemaker Jean-Paul Brun. It is from the Burgundy region of France. It's from the Beaujolais subregion. Um, as you can start to see now, it's a sparkling rosé wine. And one of the reasons that I chose this wine and thought it would be kind of fun is because it's a wine that's made in the petulant natural style. or Which I like the way that sounds. Yeah. Right. And Anytime or, <laughs> petulant, it's just, I like petulant that. Right, yes. yeah, and uh, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but um, uh, abbreviated as Petnat, which is kind of um, the nickname for this style of wine. And what's kind of cool about it is it's an alternative to wines made in the method Champenois. So we've all heard of Champagne. Um, when Champagne is made, the way that it becomes sparkling is that there's a um, a first fermentation that occurs before the bottling and then when the wine is bottled there is a second fermentation that takes place in the bottle where the carbon dioxide is trapped in the bottle. Um, everything about making champagne is very controlled. There are rigorous rules, um, recipes and procedures that are followed to get a, a really fine consistent product. Um, Petnat on the other hand is bottled before the first fermentation is finished. And so that initial fermentation finishes in the bottle. And so what that means is that the end product is a little bit less predictable. It's a little more wild. That petulant um, child. It's, that's, yeah, right. that's exactly right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, most of the wines are unfiltered. So, you, you know, they might be a little cloudy in appearance. There might be some um, yeast or sediment that you'll see in the bottle. Um, so it's just something fun, different, um, a little bit wild. Um, generally uh, also more um, value oriented than a champagne so so that's a little bit of background on this wine so it's a what's it in the twenty dollar range yeah this is in the twenty dollar range um, this particular one i picked up at the wise old dog here in west hartford which is a, a great place to go and learn about wine um, i've tasted it a few times and uh, enjoy coming back to it i gotta say vivian i don't know if you noticed it when i was pouring but that bouquet really just popped up right out of the glass yeah. it sort of almost is like a lambrusco in a way mm. because that the flavor or that the smell is so yeah. pronounced yeah. Yeah. i'm very excited to taste and this. i think there are lambruscos made in that style as well i was surprised by the uh, color yeah it, the bottle certainly doesn't give it away. Right, right, yeah. yeah it's, and it's clearer than I would have expected also. It is a little bit clear, yeah. yeah. And you know, my memory may be a little hazy, but I, I, I think because there is um, some variation between bottles, um, you know, some may be a little cloudier, or hazier than others, but this one's fairly clear. It's a spring bouquet. It is a spring bouquet. And you're, yeah. you're probably saying to yourself, uh, you know, you've been watching the show for eight years or whatever, we're sitting down. I think that's only happened probably <laughs> twice in all the years we've been doing the show. And I figure, why not? It's spring. <clears throat> Picture us being on a nice patio somewhere, mm -hmm. yes. talking about the beautiful sun, the beautiful air, the beach, mm -hmm. and drinking our first wine. And yeah. it really is definitely a spring wine. And probably not the beach yet, because it's only spring, but yeah. uh, maybe uh, an anticipation. It's kind of like, yeah, it's pretty fruity. I mean, I, it, you kind of get hit with some strawberry flavors right off the bat. Um, you know, it's like, it's not too serious, you know, it's, it's kind of a whimsical wine. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's fruity, it's fun. Um, the fizziness 
if it's that's very the much. right word. It's, it's really active. Um, the flavor profile is there at first, mm -hmm. and it diminishes slowly, mm -hmm. but there's still a very nice aftertaste, I yeah. think, on it that uh, I find very pleasant. Um, the color is quite interesting. The color is great, and I like how fine the bubbles are. Mm -hmm. When the bubbles yeah. are too big, it almost becomes like a soda. Yeah, And sure. I'll say that a lot of sparkling wines that I've had that are uh, of, uh, made of red grapes, sometimes they taste very much like clay at the mm. end. If you, mm -hmm. or Like too earthy. Almost. Yeah, too earthy, yeah. but this is nice. Yeah. yeah. And this is the Gamay grape, which I think is the main grape there in the Beaujolais subregion. Um, but just, you know, very cool expression of it, I think. Um, <clears throat> and I put out, uh, Chuck and I put out some cheeses too that you would generally have with, you know, in the springtime uh, with wines. And I think uh, whether or not we're going to eat while we're on the show, because mm. you never know how that's going to go. <laughs> right. But uh, I think both, this is a fennel salami. We mm. have a, an extra sharp New York cheese. We have a mm. pepper jack. And of course, we have the Kerry Gold cheese, which is very popular. People seem <coughs> to really like that one. Too. Yeah, I brought this Kerry Gold in. Um, you know, people probably would recognize the brand. Um, you know, thinking that the show would air in March, I thought, well, why not have an Irish cheddar and it's, um, as yeah, we celebrate um, St. Patrick's Day? And the other thing that I think people may not be aware of with the Kerry Gold brand is both their cheeses and then also their butter products are all. Um, made with milk from cows that are grass-fed and so a lot of people now are, are looking for that you know whether they're in the meat department looking for grass-fed beef um, so this is a way to get um, cheese and butter from grass-fed cows very interesting yeah, yeah. thanks for bringing it in uh, bringing it in I've had the butter but I've never mm -hmm. had the cheese so, yeah. yeah it's, it's good. pretty cool and they have uh, you know added more and more flavors throughout the years they probably have six or eight varieties now um, and this is just one of their classic aged Irish cheddars so. Well, i got to say, we're off to a spectacular start. I really enjoyed that first one, Chuck. Glad uh, you liked it. I love the bottle. It's, it's so yeah. unique looking. And uh, it's, uh, you know, sometimes you want a conversation piece to start off yeah. a, a nice little conversation. Absolutely. Th did I pour you too much that time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to make I you... I talked too I much. Try, I tried to do that, <laughs> that first sip small. I know we got five wines yeah, to go through. So okay. I try to be a little bit small Thank next you. time. <laughs> so thanks again, Chuck. That was yeah, really pleasure. very unique and very interesting. Yeah. All right, so I told my guests that I've, I've done something tonight that I've never done in all the years I've done the show. Now, mm. as you all know, I, I buy a lot of wine, I collect a lot of wine, and I've talked about wine clubs. Mm. So about a month ago, I said, you know what, spring's coming. I'm going to order, and there's a lot of wine clubs out there. Uh, this particular wine that we're going to be tasting comes from Wine Insiders. You mm. can find them on Groupon, Living mm. Social, it's just one of many. So I decided to pick or order their spring wine selection, okay. oh. which Jim, whenever he was on the show, said, Bobby, you can never order wine without tasting it. <laughs> and I said, of course you can, Jim. Yeah. Why not? Why, why can't you do it? They're supposed to be experts, and they, they do this all the time. Mm -hmm. And you can find some good values in the wine club. And I would just recommend if you do use a wine club, and there's so many of them, mm -hmm. just be careful with the shipping, because sometimes mm -hmm. they'll lure you in with very low-cost bottle prices. Mm -hmm. And then when you add in the shipping costs and the taxes, sometimes you're not really getting that much better of a deal than if you just went to your local establishment. Sure. But right. I wanted to see what their selection would be like for my spring show. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to try first is the Cartolina, mm -hmm. and it's the 2016 Pinot Grigio, and the region is the Della Venezia. I'm mm. sure I'm saying my Italian wrong, but <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. Like you could look it up. <laughs> and the uh, Cartolina Winery um, has been around for quite some time. They produce uh, a lot of wine. Mm. And generally, from what the tasting notes are that I've read, remember, I haven't tasted this yet. Okay. And I'll be very curious to see if you agree with them. Mm. It should be apricot, pear, grapefruit, a little bit minerality. Mm -hmm. uh, and it should be a long finish, which generally you don't hear when you're talking about Pinot no. Grigio. Right. So yeah, right. we're going to find out if the wine insiders, <laughs> experts, right. are correct or they are wrong. I okay. generally like Pinot Grigio in the springtime for a couple reasons, or the summertime. It's not a complex white wine. Mm -hmm. Right. Sil served chilled, it's very refreshing for so many different types of food. And because it's not complex, you're not scratching your head trying to analyze it. It's right. just a drinking wine that you drink. Mm -hmm. And like most Italian wines, they're meant to be drunk. Yeah. With or without food. Right. Sure. Though a lot of Thank them you. are better with food. Right, right. So the 2016 <clears throat> Grigio and the 2015 that's available also at the website actually um, has a little bit different uh, flavor profile than this mm -hmm. one. But the grapefruit and ginger root is one of the ones that sort oh. of interested in me too. There's mm -hmm. a little ginger root in this. Yeah, that was a... I smell a little bit of lemon. Yeah. I think I think it's lemon. 
It smells kind of some melon too, mm. maybe cantaloupe, um, but it's not overpowering. Fairly it's mild, a little so. bit more flavorful than your average Pinot Grigio. This is slightly warmed a little bit. Mm. The colder your Pinot Grigio is, the less, the more one note it's going to be. Right. You don't want to serve sure. a Pinot Grigio too cold because all yeah. you're going to really taste is pretty much water. Right. So right. letting this sit for a while like we've done, yeah. I think, uh, is interesting. I think it's perfect. And actually, I've heard a, a little phrase that we serve most of our white wines too cold and most of our red red wines too, too warm. warm. Yeah. Yes. And really, the balance is, is probably in the middle. So I think this is actually a great temperature. It, it does open up the flavor a little bit. It has good body. Um, it, you know, it's not a thin... Um, super crisp um, white wine, I wouldn't say. It's, a, a, to me, a little closer to like a Chardonnay um, in terms of the body of the wine. Um, it is a, there is a longer finish yeah. than your I, average Absolutely, Pinot Grigio. yeah. It's very yeah. Chardonnay-like in the finish. Yeah, it's pretty good acidity, I think, so I think that would make it a, a nice pairing with you know, different types of cheese um, and certainly some pasta and anything with lemon. Yeah. I could see this being a great pair. And, uh, you know, when it comes to wine clubs, and like I said, when you, when you do your searching online and looking at wine clubs, what they have to offer, you know, obviously you have to go by what the, they're saying about their wines. Mm -hmm. You can do some research. You can actually, before you even buy, look up the wines that they're selling mm -hmm. to see what some of the reviews have said, uh, what maybe a little history about the vineyard and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, they produce a pretty good substantial amount of wine, so they have a good mm -hmm. reputation. Um, but once again, you can only get this at a wine club. Mm -hmm. So in, in a way, you're taking a chance. But... It's, to me, it's still worth the risk if you enjoy wine and you want to try something different that you can't get locally yeah. to try. And I know, I know, Chuck, you said you get wine shipped to you from California, don't you? I have a habit, um, which I've been trying to kick. <laughs> but, yeah, I try to get out to California if I can once a year. And, um, you know, while there, I find myself joining wine clubs. And, you know, I'll usually, you know, be on them for a year or two, and then I'll cut back, and then I'll take another trip, and then I'll join another club. And... Um, but it's led to a lot of great wines being uh, tasted at my house. So. <laughs> now, Viv, I know you travel all over the place, so you, you, your palate's probably experienced a lot of different wine. You were just recently, was it Africa? Or yeah, what? I was in Egypt. Mm. It's just amazing. It, it's good to try everywhere you go. What is the wine like in Egypt? Like, what do, they, do they offer the same types of wine as they would here? Or uh, is it... You know, I'm trying to think. It's more like, you know, when you go to Italy and you have like a lot of local wines, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know, my mm -hmm. cousin made this or <laughs> it's kind of like a lot of homemade stuff. Yeah. So very personal. Who, who yeah. knows what the label is, but right. it's homemade right. beer maybe or, or what have you. And that's that's what you have in the very small glasses. Mm -hmm. So wonderful. I enjoy that, though. Yeah. You know, with the local food, I'm like, bring it on. Yeah. Go local. Well, I think that's the best, right, is when you can experience, you know, wine as part of a local cuisine. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I think when we're trying to pair wine with food or even wine with cheese, we get so scientific. A little about too serious. Things. Yeah. yeah. And we're thinking about well, what's the chemistry and how am I going to cut the fat with some acidity in the wine? And y you can, you know, that can work. But I think at the end of the day, especially in places Italy, France, you know, older cultures, the cuisine kind of people have done that work for you. So if you have right. the cheese and the wine and the meal from the same area, it's going to be a, a match made in heaven, probably. Well, since I went to this tasting cold, um, mm -hmm. it's probably, in my opinion, and once again, you don't have to agree with me, of course, <laughs> it's probably one of the better Pinot Grigios I've had on this show. Mm -hmm. I've had other ones off the show. It has more flavor than I'm used to for a Pinot Grigio. Yeah. More body. It's a little bit more Agreed. body. Yeah. And, the, and the price point is certainly mm -hmm. approachable, I mm -hmm. think, uh, when you factor in, without the shipping cost and everything, mm -hmm. it, comes, it comes out to like $9 for the yeah. bottle. Uh, and you might pay something, Perfect price. Yeah. maybe 12 or $13 in the store. But once again, if before you do the, the wine clubs, make sure you look at the, the shipping cost and factor that in to yeah. what the savings are. Because I think it's a, for that price, it's an amazing value. And I think served along like a shrimp scampi, a nice buttery shrimp scampi. I I'm think thinking that like a fettuccine Alfredo yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. Good work with that, too. So, yeah, That'd be great. I think it's great. I think I'm not a huge fan of Pinot Grigio normally, and I think this one really... Um, it, it just has uh, more of an approachable nature. It's a little smoother. Let me ask drinking. you both this. If this was a blind tasting and this was a white wine, would you have guessed a Pinot Grigio? I no. would have guessed un oak Chardonnay. That's very interesting. Yeah. I, see, I would not have guessed Chardonnay. a Chardonnay. You both yeah. said yeah. Chardonnay. I would not have guessed that. Oh, really? I probably would have went along with a Spanish white, maybe. Huh. Really? I would not have guessed a Chardonnay. Because to me, Chardonnay, mm. you get that butter. And there's certainly not a butter, butter profile mm. here. No, yeah. But because of no. the finish, I get that. Yeah, right. so it's that richer body that kind of makes you feel that fullness like an un oak Chardonnay might but yeah. yeah I could see like an Albarino it's similar to some Albarinos I've had 
Um, but yeah, interesting Very wine. Yeah, good choice. Now, Vivian. Yes. We were all excited when we saw this bottle that you brought in. Um, I've once again another one that I've never had before. Yes. Uh, Varejo. 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 And speaking of Spanish wines, here we are. And here we are. And yes. Once again, um, this looks. So, when you brought this in, I, I immediately said this has to be good because just the label itself is impressive. <laughs> just like Chuck's bar, I said, well, it's going to be good. I just buy it by the label. the label. As an <laughs> ex-graphic yeah. designer, I'm, I'm just, yeah, all about the label. So, the what can you tell us about it? How you found this little gem? Well, mm -hmm. I um, wanted to find something different, and we had talked about getting something that was springy, which is kind of a tall order. Mm. So I uh, walked into Spiritus and I found this. And um, I had mentioned that, uh, you know, Spanish wines are really undervalued. Um, and I thought maybe this could be good. So this grape variety apparently came from North Africa in the 11th century. And um, again, Spanish wine, never heard of it before. I thought, let's try it. It's described as a wonderful varietal, um, light racy with a pithy finish. Pithy. pithy. A lot of P words on the episode. Yeah, <laughs> and then I thought, okay, let's see, let's see how we go. They say that it's, um, in the description, it's very similar to a Sauvignon Blanc. Hmm. So. I get the citrus, I haven't yeah? tasted it yet, but yeah. I get the citrus right. bouquet pretty quickly. The color I noticed too, um, <clears throat> When you first poured it, it almost had like some green tones, like a super ripeness to the color, um, which was kind of interesting. I haven't seen a color like, like that. Like a Portuguese a white wine. wine. Yeah. The green cool. wine. That has a nice little bite to it. And Does the bite, it? The bite kicks in a second <clears throat> after you sip it. That is very interesting. Great okay, very um, springy. Oh, I like this, I think. I'm going to have to have another sip. This is a. Uh, Short more, finish. Mm, more, yes. It is, but it's little, get that little acid, though, at the end. Yeah, yeah. almost a bit, little sour on the finish. Yeah. Um, a little tartness to it. I um, like that. Which is, yeah, pretty cool. It's it's actually a really good contrast to that Pinot Grigio. Sure we is. Had because it's way more sharp. It's kind of um, just like a, a, it really, right when you sip it, you get a lot of flavor. Um, it really cuts right through. Um, and like you said, quick finish. So very different than what we just had. I like it. And I, I got to say, you know, doing a, a quote unquote a, a spring themed show here in uh, February, mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> there's always a chance that you might be off on a few. But the first three wines are definitely what you would call spring leading right into summer. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I could see this one being really great on even a very hot day because it's just so crisp, you know. Um, so this is one maybe to serve very chilled <laughs> compared yeah, to that. Yeah, chilled and, Grigio. I don't know, barbecue. Mm -hmm. Barbecue chicken or mm -hmm. something is what mm -hmm. I'm thinking. And what was the price point on this one, Vic? Really good value, $13. Great. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Isn't it? I would have guessed a little bit more expensive. And, and you know what? I am going to say I disagree with the Sauvignon Blanc. It's yeah. not sweet enough for me to be that. What do you think? No, I, if I was tasting this point, I would not have guessed the Simon Blanc. No. I, once again, I definitely would have thought this was a Spanish white. Yeah. But um, I, the Simon Blanc, I understand why people might think that, but. No, I, I'm not tasting that at all. And I also read that it's used to uh, blend with other wines too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can taste that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It, it kind of tastes somewhat familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could see if you just if you were to smell it only, I could see someone guessing a Sauvignon Blanc. But once you taste it, it is a pretty different type of flavor, I think. I took a chance yeah. and took a bite of uh, the New York Sharp, and I'm mm. going to see how that goes with this because okay. I think it might go very well with that. Yeah, I would think. Yeah, it does. So it's a, it's a good wine to pair with a, a, a sharper cheese. Yep. Obviously, a red's going to be a little bit better, but it certainly works. And when you went into the store, you, uh, Viv, to look for a wine, did you actually ask for like a, a spring wine or just something that was... I did. Uh, you did? I did. And then we immediately went to sparkling wines. Mm -hmm. And I said, mm. I'm like, you know, for me, I love sparkling wines and champagnes all the time. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm like, let's do something different because sparkling is my thing. So, and that's what <laughs> I had the last time I was here. So I'm like, we got to do something different. Yes, I'm glad you did. Because yeah. uh, since all of us have had three unique different items here, um, and if it's worked out great, so I'm mm. glad you went with something yeah. different. Yeah. Now, the rosé that's coming up, mm. I'll let you finish. Don't worry, Vivian. I'm sure, not going to yeah. force you. I'll talk a little <laughs> bit about it. I think we've had this before. I think, Vivian, last time we were on the show, we might have been doing a rosé show. I can't recall. 
But the reason I brought this on is because I, well, I have still quite a few left. So that's one reason. <laughs> Number two is um, it's a great spring and summer wine. I actually drank quite a few of these during the summer. Mm -hmm. And it is the Miravigna Rosé from Terra di Chiete, the Abruzio region of Italy. And it's actually the oldest winery in the Abruzio region. Is it really? And mm. Wow. Uh, they make a lot of different varietals of wine, but this one has been very highly rated. And it's, we'll talk about the price later because it's very, okay. very affordable. It's 100% Montepulciano. Oh, right. Right. And you can tell by the color, obviously the grapes weren't, the skins weren't left in too, too long. That's why you get oh, that wonderful yeah. little color. Um, it almost looks like a caramelly color. It, it does. But of, it, of um, caramel a little bit. When I tasted this over the summer last year, I originally shied away from it because it was Italian rosé. Mm -hmm. So my mind automatically went to Italian rosé, that's going to be a little on the sweeter, heavier side. Right. It was not. Okay. Hence why I brought, I think about a half a case of that. Yes. I think this is my last bottle. But um, high acid, wow. citrus, crisp cherry flavors, aroma. It's interesting because when you smell it, it almost reminds me of smelling a bourbon for some reason. <laughs> Do you, you kind of get that I, connection? I do. And I'm like, yeah. I was like looking at it. I'm like, kind of cognac y looking. Yeah, cognac is actually a more yeah. precise way. Like, it, it has that smell of sugary sweetness mm. to it. You know, it does. And I'm beginning to wonder. Which is interesting. This does not taste like I remember it. Oh, really? Do we this have tastes our, different. Do we have our first corked Are wine? Are we corked? Two guys Let's find out. A lot of wine. I think it might be. This is not how I remember the flavor. It does not. It should be lighter. It should be much lighter. This ta you taste like a liqueur almost. Yeah, it's there. There's something off. It's sweeter. Yeah. Well, all the years, eight over eight years, <laughs> we have never had. <laughs> that's not true. We've actually <clears throat> had. It was the same. Of course, it was me again. I had a Russian sparkling on the show. Yeah. Twice. Oh wow. Interesting. And both times it was it was corked and there was no bubbles. Wow. It was really? not good. Jim. Well, yes, it's maybe an interesting yeah. opportunity to talk about what corked wine is and the fact that I think it's something like 10% of wines end up being corked. And maybe I'll try explaining it. Maybe you guys can correct me. But I, I, when I first heard corked wine, I thought there's something wrong with the cork where the cork doesn't have a good seal and oxygen is getting in and the wine's getting oxidized. But I think it's actually the presence of... Um, either some type of pathogen or, or bacteria present on the cork that actually interacts with the it's wine. It's the moisture on the cork. Right. So often, you know how um, you uncork a bottle and mm -hmm. then people sniff it? Mm -hmm. You're meant to actually feel it oh, to see if there's moisture. Right. Yeah, and if yeah. there's moisture, that's going to affect the chemical makeup in the bottle. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so I never smell the cork anymore after I learned that. You yeah. always Feel it. test for moisture. You know it can happen because I bought so many of these over the years, over, well since last year, I said I bought half a case and I'm sure I bought some individually. Mm -hmm. And the moment I took a sip of this, I knew something was off. Yeah. I was hoping yeah. it, wasn't, it was not gonna be the case. Right, right. But you know, it, that's why we do the show. So to, yeah. to let you know that you can sometimes buy a bottle. Absolutely. And something that you're familiar with that you've tasted before. Yeah. And you taste it with friends or just yourself. Say, this doesn't taste like I remember it. Yeah. And this yeah. is a class. Now, here's the negative of that. I don't have a spill bucket to pour, right, to pour it out. In. <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure how we're going to handle this. Well, we're just going to drink it. We're going to be it. troopers here. I'm probably just of course. Yeah, we'll just Bottoms have to finish up. it. Yeah, cheers. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I think, like to still defend this, that <laughs> it's still a very good wine. It is. Yeah, and sure. I would still give it a shot. And yeah. you know what else I'm going to say about corked wines? Sometimes it's hard to tell if they're corked. You'll mm -hmm. never know. Because just by the color, older white wines get darker. Right. And older red wines yeah. get lighter. Sure. So if you're looking at it and you think, God, I think it's off, you actually have to taste it, smell it, have it. You won't know. You know, you, you might not know. And you know because you've had this before. Yeah, sure. Well, it doesn't taste like a rosé. There's something off about it. Yeah. There's no question that there's something off about it. I think, too, what's interesting is, like, when we go to a restaurant, um, when I first started ordering wine at restaurants, there's that moment of anxiety when you have to, you're presented with the wine and the sommelier or the server is waiting for you to do your little taste and you know at first I was like you know he wants to know if I like it or not and if I like it he'll pour the rest and of course I would never say oh I don't like it but it's really not about do you like this wine or not it's about is the wine defective yeah. you're really right. testing to make sure that there's no flaws 
in the wine. And so if you're not sure, it's a good idea to ask the server, ask the sommelier, Absolutely. they have the training. Um, but that's really what you're doing at the restaurant. It's not necessarily a taste test as much as a test on, is this wine okay? Or Quality. are there some defects in it that ha you know has made mm. this bottle um, subpar? All right, so we're, I think we only have about four minutes left, so I want to get to the Chianti at the end. It's okay. the same vineyard. It's the uh, Cartolina Chianti from the Tuscany region, Sangiovese varietal. Um, good tannin, it should be a long, lingering finish, cherry, plum, and red fruit. Mm. Now, a lot of us are familiar with Chiantis. I'm sure we've all had them here. Mm -hmm. um, once again, I'm somewhat familiar with what a Chianti should taste like. I like the fact that uh, this... The tasting notes said cherry and plum, which I sort of like as a combination. I can smell the cherries already. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. There's the bouquet. <clears throat> you know, I've grown to really like Chiantes from back in the 80s when it was like considered kind of a cheap wine, mm. if you will. But well, it's an they're wonderful. Wine. I mean, that's basically mm. what it is. It's an everyday wine in Italy. I, I tell you right now, um, there is a lingering finish on this one. It's sort of, uh, of course, I don't know if that's because of the rosé, bad rosé we just had prior to that, <laughs> but uh, there is a little bit more lingering finish on this one. I like it. Yeah. It has an earthy finish. It does, yeah. It's very nice. old world. Mm. Um, that's a really nice a good Chianti. Wine. Yeah, I mean, I always think of Chianti as like, you know, when we think of Italian food, simple Italian food, pizzas, pastas, you know, big red, red meaty sauces. I feel like Chianti's often go well with that, and this would be wonderful, I think, with you know, a really rich pasta, even a slice of pizza. Um, you know, nice it's another, wine. it's also, talking about the wine club again, this goes with, even if you're buying wine in a store, they're from the same vineyard. Mm -hmm. So you're getting wines from the, the Cartolina winery. So if you liked their whites, chances are you might like the reds because yeah. they know what they're doing. So they're generally gonna produce wines. If you like one type of wine from their, from their winery, you're probably gonna like one or two of the other ones if you like that varietal. And it's interesting because that one was from the Abruzzo region, I think you said, right? Yeah. The, and the, this one is going to be from the Chianti region. Yes. So these winemakers are going to be taking grapes from different parts yep, of Italy. Yep, that's what they do. Yep. And, and um, having their winemakers prepare these presentations. Um, I've been lucky enough to have the opportunity to do a, a biking wine tour in Chianti Classico, which I highly recommend for anybody who's lucky enough to be able to do it. Um, it tastes even better after riding your bicycle up to the winery. Um, so yeah, or well this deserved is a, anyway. Right, right. yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of great experiences out there with this. This is like a big Chianti. Yeah. Don't it you is. think? A big Chianti. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I think so. It's not a small Chianti. Mm. It's a big, like the big salad, it's the big Chianti. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, it's nice. In our remaining Wonderful. two minutes, sure. I just wanted to uh, make sure I get the word out for uh, WHU TV's gala at the Pond House, which is coming up on March 15th. And uh, it was, it's a great time, you know, you're gonna be supporting our, here, this show, you're gonna be supporting all the shows on WHCTV. And the Pond House is a fantastic venue. And I know last year we had a great time. There's a lot of auction items. Uh, there'll be all kinds of fun stuff going on, good food, good appetizers. And so make sure you check online and uh, get some tickets and join us, because I'll be there. Hopefully Vivian Chuck will be there, but if not, I'll be there and I'm looking forward to seeing you. So, Chuck, I want to thank you for bringing your selection. Thank Absolutely you. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you for having me. If we have thank time, you. after I go through my tirade, we're going to go through it. Sit back. <laughs> I As so. always, thank you so much for coming in. Wonderful. And you guys always, I'm telling you, every time you come on the show, you bring some fantastic stuff. Oh, so, thank you. Thank you very much. So, I think we should really quickly go back. Try one I more sparkler. Okay. You don't have to. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, this fantastic bubbles. And I guess it's a sparkling. You can't call it a champagne because it's, Correct. Yeah. it's yeah. just yeah. a sparkling. Yep. But... I actually, uh, a few months back, maybe six months back, I love Lambruscos. They've really mm -hmm. tickled my taste buds. <laughs> and this reminds me of a Lambrusco, but it's a French version. Yeah. And I really, really enjoy this. So, so if you do like rosés or if you do like a, um, a sparkling rosé, mm -hmm. I would strongly recommend you trying this particular one because it's Wonderful. so unique. Yeah. I'm in. And it's got a great story, right? And a great label which is what we're all looking for when we bring wine to a party. <laughs> well, that's what's great when you go to Wise Old Dog, and mostly all the places mm -hmm. here in town, they're all, they have great staff, you know. Uh, Absolutely. Westside West Side Maximum, Wines West Side. is a great place to go. But uh, they're going to talk to you about what they carry, and they, mm -hmm. they love what they do. So once again, I, I want to thank you guys for joining me on the show. Yeah. I want to thank Vivian and Chuck for joining me on the show. Um, 
have a great summer and uh, we have some surprises coming in store for you for summer before I take my hiatus and head out to Newport <laughs> so um, and get my tan. I'm sitting here without my tan so I hate yeah, that. Right. <laughs> but thanks you all for joining me. Uh, we look forward to seeing you or if you're watching us uh, in the coming months. So until next time, keep me, keep Vivian, Cheers. keep Chuck in your wine cellar. <laughs> Cheers.